4-3 even 6-1 is the best defense in Madden 24, and in this video we're going to show you why. Now, matched up against this guy, keep it on the DL, 0-1, uh, pretty good player. He's actually, I think he's running, I can't remember if he's running dollar or 6-1, um, and uh, we're rocking Jets on offense, and we're rocking Chiefs on defense. If you guys want to get any of my full offensive and defensive ebooks they're completely updated over on the patreon page link's going to be in the description for just ten dollars you get access to literally everything all of the ebooks all of the updates everything for just 10 bucks uh over a thousand members in the patreon page so really excited about that and again if you have not uh joined that again it's only 10 bucks so links in the description a lot of people uh trying to get better at madden so he's kind of running a weird defense and it's actually like you see this little disengage kind of disengage a gap and then we've got some edge pressure with this. This is 4-3 even, but he's shifting his linebackers to the left side. Why is he shifting his linebackers to the left side? I think it's because he's going to kind of base out of the five-man pressure. As you see, this is very similar five-man. I'm going to go to the double corner concept. Able to hit it, get out, and uh, get a couple yards there. It's going to set up a first and goal situation. Now, uh, really wanted to talk today just about defense in general and how to be good at defense in Madden. And there's a couple of principles that I think – you know, you have to kind of have when, when we're talking about defense. The first principle that you have to have fundamentally is offenses are designed to create space or attack space. Defenses are, are designed to constrain space or control space or contain space. So that is really one of the main reasons why it is much, much more difficult to score in Madden from the 10-yard line and in than from the 20-yard line and in. Because from the 20-yard line, there's more space for the routes to be able to run and for them to be able to attack, right? So that's a really, really big principle. So for defense, it, it truly is all, all about constraining space. Now, that was a terrible rollout. That was me just trying to make a play, and I wasn't really... You know, I was just kind of just playing around, honestly, offensively. I wasn't really thinking too much. You know, he was running kind of a weird defense. So I didn't think this was actually going to be that good of a game. And it ends up being one of the better games that I've played in a while. So, anyways, go to the double corner and kind of felt like I got a little cheated there. I uh, thought that was going to be a touchdown. But, again, let's keep talking about this. So, so offenses, their primary function in Madden and in real life, and really regardless of sport, is to try to create space. This is why. In the NBA, for example, the five-out offense is kind of the, 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 the baseline anymore for offense in basketball. Why? Well, because it creates the most amount of space. There's more space for the, uh, for the players to be able to go into pick-and-roll actions and to be able to attack off the dribble and to be able to catch and shoot out of that. There's, they're, they're, they stretched the – what they've done is they've stretched that half court. And so people like Steph Curry are so good – because they're able to create more, they're able to attack more space than other people. So that is kind of the fundamental principle that everything is built on. Now in Madden, blitzing is the centerpiece of defense. No matter what defense you're running, if you do not have a plan for pressure, the defense is fundamentally bad. And the reason why is because in Madden, pressure is really the key because it forces the opponent into mistakes. Really the only way to get stopped in Madden, in my opinion, especially in these newer Maddens, is to make a mistake, right? There's really not, for lack of a better word, like no defense is really great because no defense can control the whole field and because the routes and the movement are all factors in that as well. But in general... Every defense has to have the capability to get pressure. Now, from a practical consideration, this is also important to discuss because 4-3, even 6-1, or dollar are pretty much the clear-cut best defenses in this game. They're pretty much the top dogs. And the reason why is, is really solely for the pressure aspect. They have the most amount of ways to create pressure. When I talk about ways to create pressure, I think we need to also think into consideration like variables. So if I have a really, really good blitz, if I have a really good blitz, let's say I have a the four-man A-gap out of dollar three two. That's really one of the best defenses in the game. But it's also one of the blitzes in the game that is relatively easy to pick up. It's fairly simple to pick up the four-man, and I'm talking specifically about the four-man, 
dollar a gap. All you have to do to pick it up is double team the defensive tackle, the nose tackle, or slide right and ID the slot corner on the left. Those are the main two ways and methods to pick up the dollar a gap. And the problem is if I was to go to DB fire two, you can kind of run a very similar pass protection to pick up free safety zone blitz that you can to pick up DB fire two, which makes the five man pressure systems from dollar really kind of to a degree like universally uh, counterable, right? Counterable. What's interesting about four, three, even six, one is there's not really a consistent pickup method for the six man pressure. There's not really a consistent pickup method for the six man pressure. Okay. Now we are sending one more person in six, one than we are sending in dollar. And most people would tell you that dollar is better for the coverage behind the blitz, but six ones blitz is better overall. Another thing that people would say about six, one that we know to be true is six, one has the best sheds in the game. They really do. They have the best like four man pass rush. It's very good four man pass rush. They shed very quickly in six one. Um, you could even create a four man disengage defense. If you pinch the D line and crash down, I don't do that because it's a tell, which is another big principle of defense. We're going to get to in a minute, but any good defense in Madden cannot have, cannot have tells. And the reason why is if you are playing the, the, the biggest tool you have in your tool belt defensively is to be is the ability to change the picture post snap. So it can look like a cover two, but now it's a cover three. It can look like a cover four, but now it's man coverage. It can look like uh, a double Mabel defense, but it's a send six cover zero manned up blitz. You see what I'm saying? You, the, the ability to change the picture post snap is really the biggest tool that you have to force your opponent into mistakes. And so the combination of the ability to blitz, the ability to make everything look the same is really why I believe that four, three, even six, one is the best defense in the game because it's the fastest blitz in the game. And it's a pressure that you have to, as I get a crazy pick, it's a pressure that you have to, you have to adjust to offensively, right? If they're, if the defense isn't doing anything that makes the offensive player uncomfortable, in my opinion, that is really the worst way to play defense because if you are just in a drop eight coverage all game and you're, and again, if your sheds are good, that's one thing. But if you're in a drop eight coverage all game and I can just sit back and I've got secure protectors now, so we're going to get pretty good pass protection to me you're not going to be able to get stops. You're not going to be able to force mistakes because again, how do we get stops in Madden? As I missed one touchdown to throw another one. How do you get stops in Madden? You get stops in Madden truly probably when the other player makes a mistake. Now, another little caveat that I did want to cover in terms of four, three, even six, one, there are some underrated realities as to why it is good. Four, three, even six, one is generally good against most every run in the game. So we take out the ability for our opponent to be able to just run inside zone or one run zero and trap. Now it does not say, I did not say that it is good against every single RPO in the game. Okay. So that is really the biggest weakness of six one. If you, in my opinion is probably the run, uh, the RPO defense, I think is probably the weakest point. What's interesting is a lot of comp players would tell you that they think four, three, even six, one is the best trips tight end defense. And a lot of it has to do with pressure. It really doesn't have to do with coverage. It has to do with the ability to get pressure because no one likes to get screamed at. And that's why blitzing and pressure are the centerpiece of defense, which is even more the reason why 6-1 and dollar are, are really the best defenses in the game. Now, you could throw 3-4 odd in there. You could throw nickel 3-3 three, three in there. You could go 3-3-5 three, three, odd in there. Those defenses are all very similar variations of dollar, but really dollar is the best because dollar has the most options. You can create pressure multiple different ways from dollar, whereas three for odd, you're basically running the you're basically running the A gap blitz. Three three five odd, you're basically running the A gap blitz. You're not really running the edge pressure. The cool part about dollar is you can run the A gap blitz, but you can also run the edge pressure, but you can also run cross fire pressure, but you can also run safety pressure. To me, that's what makes dollar like really good. Now, what makes six one really good 
is although you're running basically the same blitz, like you're just blitzing your linebackers and standing in the right side A-gap, and I typically turn auto flip off, that blitz is so good, it's so powerful, it's so dominant that it's hard to pick up. Whereas 3-3-5 three, three, odd, 3-4 three, odd, nickel 3-3, three, three, nickel over, big nickel over, none of those formations have a pressure that is impossible to pick up. And I'm not saying 4-3 even with 6-1 is impossible to pick up, but I will say very confidently that 4-3 even 6-1 is inconsistent to pick up. You get a lot of pinballing and disengages and B-gaps that you don't get out of other formations. And so it's uncomfortable to play 6-1. It is not uncomfortable to play nickel 2-4-5 normal. Why? Because of the pressure you can create, all right? And all of those formations, like 6-1, we can still create a lot of coverage concepts. We can create real coverage concepts. We can cross man. We uh, for we can cross man some players. We can we can um, roll our safeties over. We can double Mabel out of it. We can play cover four, base press cover four, deep zone KOs. Like there's a lot of coverage options that you do have out of six one. And it would be even better if when you put your safety in a 20 to 25 yard zone, they would be able to get more to the sideline. Again, this kind of goes back, goes a little bit back to movement in general, but in general, I do think you can do almost everything from six one that you can do from really any defense. It just requires a little bit of a adjustments, right? It requires you to make adjustments, which is, Changing the post snap picture, which is our biggest asset on defense, is to adjust to take to. And there you see there. See again. Look at the pressure. If you send five out against six one, you're going to get screamed at, and it's not. It's going to come in fast. And the reason it's going to come in fast is because everybody's ninety nine speed. The linebackers are ninety nine speed, so when they come in, they come in fast. I think the best thing you could do for six one is to get defensive linemen that are night that are that are fast like i'm actually going to be probably getting rid of worn sap because i don't think inside stuff is really relevant anymore you just need speed you just need speed at the defensive line position now let's go into talking about uh once we've once we've kind of settled on a formation and we've settled on a blitz to kind of base out of i want to go into talking about logic the logic of defense under the umbrella of the term adjust the term adjust is something that you hear a lot. It's something that I've tried to think about a lot. I've tried to wrestle with a lot. I've tried to learn a lot because I feel very, this is a crazy play, great little uh, underrated red zone defense, which is another thing we need to talk about about 6-1, but it is the best red zone defense in the game, 6-1, because it constrains the space, right? So anyways, the term adjust, when we talk about defense, is really – adjusting what adjusting to what the offense is doing so blitzing is the centerpiece or the foundation uh the the cornerstone of defense is the ability to get pressure because pressure um you cannot get the same pressure from every formation what's also really important to just say right out of the gate here too you cannot create the same pressure out of every formation in the game all blitzes are not are not created equal the dollar a gap is is um is much is a much better a gap blitz than probably the three four a gap why well because you can you know you have the ability to send three and get it in more consistently like not all blitzes are created equal while there are blitz concepts that can cross apply to different formations not all formations are created equal in the actual effectiveness of the pressure so you can create a pressure plan from any formation. We have an ebook that we do that in every single year. We call it the Blitzing ebook, where we teach you how to blitz out of pretty much every formation in the game. It's in the Patreon. You get that as well with as well as all of our ebooks when you become a member. But the six one blitz is a heck of a lot better than nickel double a gap this year. Why? Well, because it comes in faster. There's it's more in, it's 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 um, more difficult to block consistently. Stuff like that. Those are all factors. Okay. So under that, we've chosen our formation. We have our foundational blitz. So now what, in, in my opinion, comes the most creative and I think the most difficult piece of defense, which is how do I adjust to what the offense is doing? And I do think it's really important uh, to try to keep this as simple as possible because 
it needs to be replicated. You need to actually be able to apply this. So when we think about adjustments, really it comes back to kind of the basketball phrasing a little bit. We want to make our opponent play left-handed. So if I'm defending, let's say that I'm defending the Colts bunch offset. So I know that they're running Colts bunch offset. I know that there are certain plays that they have in Colts that they don't have in Jets. So I want to first start with asking, why would somebody choose to run bunch offset out of Colts compared to bunch strong offset out of Jets? Well, it's probably because they want to play double post. Double post is widely considered to be probably the most um, common and overpowered play this year. It's a very good play. So if I'm playing Colts, I know that I have to come to the table with a pretty decent double post defensive setup. So I want to start by just adjusting to double post or in this guy's example, he's running bunch strong offset. So you're seeing, I'm doing a cut. I'm doing very similar adjustments to this guy. One of the things I'm doing is I'm shading on that hook curl. I really like that adjustment for solo wide receiver side because it takes away the quick throw drag. It takes away the backside post. And I'm also trying to adjust. I'm trying to adjust my zones to, to pair with the blitz. So I know that if he has time to throw the ball, there's a lot of stuff open, but I'm trying to constrain the most amount of space possible for the most amount of time possible with the resources that I have. And I feel that this coverage does constrain a lot of space. You can't throw quick to the flat on the right. You can't really throw an RPO against this. Um, you can't throw quick to the middle of the field on the left side, which then allows me with my user to really defend the right side. So if he throws a corner or something to the right, this was actually pretty bad uh, user by me. But in general, I am trying to constrain the most amount of space possible for the longest amount of times possible with the resources that the blitz allows me to utilize. And then of course, I want to every now and then throw some coverage defense at him, just throw a little shed defense, real simple, uh, you know, basic shed defense in light of the formation. But again, fundamentally, defense's job is not to stop everything the offense does. Defense's job is to constrain the space and adjust to what the offense is doing. So right here, where's the space to attack? It's really deep to the right. So that's where I'm going to go with my user. So based off my adjustments that I'm doing, I'm also factoring in that I have a user and most people don't want to throw at a user, right? If they were to pick. So if he runs double corner, which is pretty much what this is adjusting for, I want that hook curl to play that snap throw drag. But what I'm trying to basically stop with this little defense right here is I'm trying to stop Durham, right? This little, uh, now here I'm going to go to more of a, you know, kind of, and you see there, I didn't have that hook curl. So guess what? Durham's wide open. So you're, you're trying to adjust to what the offense is doing. And really more than anything, you're trying to constrain the space where the offense is likely to attack. So like right here, this is a double corner defense. What I just set up, he actually, and I was, cause again, where you're going to run with your user at the snap of the ball, especially if you're blitzing behind it is also really important because if I'm going to, if I want a user, like what is the most amount of things that I can take away with my user? which is why I like using double corner, I think is a really good way to defend it because that backside hook curve will take away a lot of stuff if you have a blitz behind us. Like right here, he runs double corner. I'm going to go to the right at the snap of the ball. We'll see what he runs here. But I should run to the right side. And I'm okay. I, I will never cover that drag. And the reason I'll never cover that drag is because I got a mid zone KO. I got to trust my adjustment. Now we get down here in the red zone. And to me, this is where defense really has the advantage because you can't, it's hard to run the ball in 6-1, as we know. And then also, like here, that was actually a really good read. And it was probably just bad user as well. But there's, there's just less space to score in the red zone. So my philosophy is I want to either try to force you into a mistake, right? To force you into a mistake. Or B, to try to hold you to three. Force mistakes and hold to three, to me, is the best way to play defense in this game. Uh, I, I just think it's really from everything that I've tried. I don't think you can just sit back and be passive. Now, I also don't think in Madden, especially this year, 
that there is not a good reason to play a drop eight coverage. There are times where you want to drop eight. There are times where you want to be in a drop eight coverage and you want to, and you want to kind of just like basically play bim, but don't break. But most of the time, probably 70% of the time, if I'm in six, one, I'm sending six. Why? Because that's the best feature of the defense. And because blitzing is the centerpiece to defense. So I'm trying to force pressure and then at certain points, I'm going to drop coverage. To me, that's the best way to play uh, because it allows for uh, or it just makes it more likely that they're going to make mistakes. Now, the adjustments that I put behind my coverage, it does depend a little bit on the offense, what they're doing, but it also kind of depends on what space am I trying to constrain? What space am I trying to take away? That's a question you've got to answer. And that question typically is and that was I oh man had I got a had I actually got a good accurate uh, uh, had I got a good accuracy on that I would have probably scored a touchdown right there I, I think I had a rat catch over top left shoulder for a touchdown so it's all about thinking through what's the space that I'm going to constrain so it kind of comes back to also thinking about the formation you're defending and asking yourself an honest question what is the hardest place for the offense to attack what is the hardest space on the field for the offense to be able to attack what is the most common or most likely place that they're going to attack and then once you start to actually play the game you start to realize he's running a lot of durham so i need to play more durham defense or he's running a lot of double corner So like right here i'm gonna go to a drop eight i'm gonna go to a drop eight coverage i've got a double flat to the left I'm trying to take away double corner. He's actually going to throw right at it. I thought this was pretty good double corner defense. And he ends up just getting a, uh, you know, a sideline catch. But I felt like that was fine. So, you know, kind of makes it a little drop eight. Now, I'm not staying in drop – or I might stay in drop eight one more time. But I'm, I'm blitzing at least on the third time. I'm not going to drop eight more than once or twice back to back. They see double corner. I'm going to go user that. He throws that C route. Good read by him. Now, what I should have done looking back at this tape, I should have probably, I probably should have blitzed him because he went five out. I probably should at least send five. So here, I don't know what this, I'm trying to kind of take away this snap throw drag to the left. End up going with some man ups here just to kind of play a little bit more aggressive. I actually like that defense. I felt like that was decent. And I'm starting to kind of, now this is, again, look at the, notice that the, the, the space on the field is constraining. He's going to have harder times throwing the ball. That's really important. Like he is not. So here I drop the defensive end of the vert hook. I think this is a very underrated adjustment because it's going to play more underneath. As you see, it plays much more underneath. And I get a B gap while I'm doing that. Again, this guy I'm playing is competent. He is very competent. He's decent. He understands pass protection. He's running one of the best offenses in the game, if not the best offense in the game, in the Bears playbook. It's a very, very good offense. And it's an offense that 6'1 tends to struggle against. And here, I just mm, – I the thing about 6'1 too, one of the most underrated things about improving on defense is having a better user, which I'm going to come back to. You're going to see that here in just a minute. But the space is constraining. See there? Boom, I get a KO. The, the hook curl comes down more. Why? Because the space is more constrained. So the more the space gets constrained, the easier it is to play defense. And the whole fundamental first principle of defense is to try to constrain the most amount of space or to try to basically to try to prevent them from scoring touchdowns, to try to hold them to field goals or get turnovers. So here again, you're seeing him trying to hit certain pockets in the space and he's not able to do it. So here's a third and goal um, in this one. So another thing is about improving your user, understanding where you can get beat. So like right here in this defense, I feel like the only place I can really get 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 beat deep is to the right side seam. So I'm gonna go right at the center of the ball. I'm gonna go into that right side, take away him, and then I see oh I see that hitch there. So I know the tight end's coming back. So I'm gonna take that away, and then we get fourth and goal. Now this is probably the play of the game in my opinion. This is like if he scores a touchdown, he's still in the game. If I get a stop here, I feel like I'm in complete control of the game here. So what you're gonna see is I'm blitzing. Okay, we're sending heat. I got this hook curl shaded underneath, but I know he wants to throw this drag to the left side. So what you're going to see here is I'm going to go right, and then I'm going to snap back. So right and then snap back, boom, take it away. And I didn't even necessarily have to because I had the hook curl there, but that's another example 
of constraining the most amount of space possible and understanding with your user how to play a little bit of like, uh, just a little bit of game with them. In Madden 24, it's really hard to user. In Next Gen Madden in general, it's really hard to user. But your user is where you're going to get stops. It's 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 really another one of those most important keys to your defense. So for recapping, what are some keys to defense? Well, the first thing is you got to understand what you're actually trying to accomplish. You're trying to constrain the most amount of space possible, right? The second thing is you have to understand that blitzing is the cornerstone of the foundation of defense. No defense can be really top tier pro level if it does not have the capability of getting consistent pressure. You have to have that ability, okay? Uh, that is that is fundamental. And then from there, it is changing the picture post-snap, adjusting to what the offense is doing, constraining the space with the – constraining the most amount of space possible with the resources for the longest amount of time possible with the resources available. How can I take away the most amount of space possible for the longest amount of time possible with the resources I have? And I typically, if I'm sitting in five or if I'm sitting in five or six, then that means I have either six cover players or five cover players. One of those being my user, which then kind of leads to the point of the user, which is understanding what can you do with your user to, to force mistakes. And that's where what I like to do is user one route and then snap back onto the other route, which is what you saw, uh, which is what you saw on that last drive. I, I knew, you know, kind of where, where he was going to throw. And so I was able to make a play. I thought that should have been a pick ends up being a touchdown and he ends up scoring. I, I really thought that should have been an interception. But anyway, you see what I'm saying with defense? Like, I feel like this is probably one of the better defensive games I've played in a while. So, anyways, here he would go to this uh, little snap throw in there. I just kind of got, I kind of got to, uh, stuck on my user. I didn't get back to my responsibility. Give yourself a job every single play. That is so important. You have to give yourself a job. And I think a good user is just doing your job well, understanding the defense and understanding that. Yeah, there might be stuff open, but you've given yourself your uh, a specific assignment and responsibility. You need to do your job well because you're only you can do that, right? You don't have the zones that you have to also. I mean, it's a, it is a video game at the end of the day. The other players are AI players. They're not going to read and react to stuff. Your user is the only player that can do that. So typically, in general, what we try to what what most people try to do in Madden is they basically try to cover. They try to be able to essentially use her in the middle of the field between the numbers is really the main, the main space for the user. And even more than that anymore, I think it's like almost like between the short side hash mark and the wide side number. So like right where his user is to the numbers on the left, or even, I mean, in this situation, I mean, I guess between the numbers is probably pretty accurate, but you're trying to stay in the middle of the field is what I'm trying to get at. Because if you have to go to the sideline, there's all this space in the middle of the field that now becomes open. So most of the that, – that also kind of plays into back to adjustments. What am I trying to adjust to take away? And typically it's either we're trying to take away the quick throw flats or we're trying to take away the intermediate flats is generally uh, what you get, especially in a, sin, uh, a heavy blitz coverage. So if you're playing a heavy coverage defense – then you're going to, you know, a good example of a heavy coverage defense would be double Mabel. It would be cover four with a hook curl. But we know in cover four with a hook curl, the main vulnerability to that defense is the deep or the intermediate sideline on both sides. So you've got to, with your user, uh, be able to, you know, basically put cut the field in half and take one half of that side. So anyway, those are some general things in terms of like adjusting to what the offense is doing. I really think adjustments, the more that I study what the best players in the world do, you will. if you watch a comp Madden game back, you'll find that pro players, and these are the best players in the world. These are players that, that literally play eight to 10 hours every single day running their same stuff. Even they miss reads. So defense is all about constraining the space on the field, and adjusting to what the offense is doing. Thanks for watching. To get my full ebook, 
Hit the link in the description for just 10 bucks. It'll get you better on defense.